this is MJ and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make this mosaic Christmas stocking. This matches the MJ's Merry Mini mosaic stocking that I did last year. It was a little tiny mini version and so this is the larger version of that pattern. I'm working with the same yarn that I used for that collection. So it's Wool of the Andes worsted weight yarn. This yarn is from We Crochet and you'll need two balls of the white and one ball of a contrasting color and i've used camel to make this size stocking so the stocking from your toe to the top is about 16 inches in length and it's about six inches wide i've added these pom-poms with beads so if you are interested in adding the same to your stocking these are tw 20 millimeter wooden beads and i have purchased them from amazon so you get a nice big bag of the beads and i'll have the link in the description box for these i also used a pom-pom maker to make the pom-poms as you can see they come out really nice and full super easy to make i will show you at the end of this video how to make the pom-pom but they come out so nice and you only have a little bit of trimming to use when you do use the pom-pom maker so i'm excited to show you my new hook case from we crochet they have come out with some beautiful new colors to choose from this is the quartz and it has a nice gold zipper i love this color this was my pick but there's other nice colors there as well to choose from so these hook cases are great because there's so much storage so you can keep extra hooks you can keep um, your needles scissors all your little bits and then i wanted to show you a brand new hook set that we crochet has just released these are the dot hooks you get the entire set and they come in a two millimeter to a six millimeter they're nice and coordinated in all of these gorgeous colors which are so fun so i'm using the five millimeter hook for this tutorial and as you can see it's nice and long it has a really nice soft gripped handle which is essential for crocheting long hours and it has a great hook it glides really nicely with the yarn especially the yarn that i'm using for this tutorial wool of the andes depending it can tend to sometimes catch with some hooks so it glides really really nicely with the new dot hooks from we crochet so i will have a link in the description box for you on where you can purchase the case and the hooks and everything you need and there's also storage on this side as well so you have lots and lots of storage with these hook cases and you can also get the matching bag which of course i had to get as well okay so i had to show you here's the matching bag i got it in quartz as well so you can coordinate your hook cases with your bags the price point is amazing it has this nice hank here embossed as well as it does on the hook case as well so it's really nice it has a big storage pocket inside lots of storage put your whips wherever you're going pick the color that you would like i the price point was so great i picked out one for my daughter as well so i got her a bag and a matching hook case as well so i'll have those linked in the description box so you can go check that out and get your order in before christmas Okay, so we're gonna be starting with the toe. So this stocking is worked from the toe up. And I'm using the same hook size throughout this pattern. So I like to grab from the center of the ball if possible. And this one, luckily, I didn't have to pull too much out. So let's begin with a magic ring. Wrap the yarn around your index finger three times. Take your hook, slide it through all three loops, grabbing the first loop and pull it through. Chain two. We'll now work six half double crochet in the ring. Chain 
Now we'll pull the ring tight. Take your tail, start to pull it. It's gonna pull one loop in, but this loop stays out. So take the loop that's pulled in, give it a tug. It's gonna pull the other loop tight. Then just take your tail and pull. Now we'll slip stitch in the first half double crochet to join. So you're going under both the loops. And we'll chain two. Now, we won't count that chain two as a stitch. We're working into the very first stitch right here. And we're gonna work two half double crochets into every stitch around. So we'll be increasing to 12 stitches. Okay, I've worked all the way around. We can slip stitch to join. If you want your slip stitch to be really invisible, just do a reverse slip stitch join. So to do that, you can keep your yarn to the front, take your hook, pushing it through from back to front under the stitch. Okay, so we're under the stitch, pull the yarn through with a yarn under rather than a yarn over. Okay. And then pull it through. Chain two. We're gonna continue to increase. We'll work one half double crochet in the first stitch and then two in the next stitch. And that pattern is repeated around. So one, and then two. One, and then two in the next. chain two and our next increase round will be one half double in the first and then one half double crochet in the first two and then two half double crochets in the next so one two and then two in the next Okay, and we'll repeat that around. So we're increasing each round by six stitches and we want to increase to a total of 48. Okay, I've slip stitched a join, chain two. This time it will be one in the first three stitches. And then two in the next. one in each of the next three and two in the next so as you see with this increase pattern each round we add one more stitch before we do the increase and we keep working in this manner until we work up to the stitches that we desire for our stocking. So the size I'm showing you, we want 48 stitches. So I'm just gonna keep increasing until I get up to my 48 stitch mark and then we can begin into the mosaic pattern. Now, if you would like to make this stocking bigger, for example, you would want to continue increasing until you get to your desired size. And because we're working up each increase in that six stitches, it will work out with the multiple that the mosaic pattern is worked in. Okay, so I've slip stitched a join, and now this round will do four half double crochets and then an increase.
Okay, so I'm gonna continue now increasing until I have the 48 stitches and then we're gonna meet back up again. Okay, so I finished working up to 48 stitches. I have eight rounds. We started with six, so increasing six each round, you just multiply that out, six times eight should be 48 stitches. So next we're going to be starting into the mosaic pattern. So I wanna pull up the mosaic chart and go over it with you if this is your first time. I'm gonna set that aside. So I'm gonna go through some of the directions with you. So the chart is read from right to left. So right to left. Rounds are worked in alternating colors. I'll show you this chart here. So we have A, B, A, B, okay? So this round is worked in color A, which is our white. The next round is worked in color B, which is our camel, okay? So as indicated in the left column, as I've indicated here. The entire round is worked in the color stated. Ignore the colors displayed in each box. So when you're working, let's say round two, and you see white, you're going to ignore that. You're still working this entire round in color B. This shows how the pattern will look. You will not change color throughout a round. A blank box indicates that you will work a single crochet in the back loop only. So every time you see a box that does not have an X, so the blank box indicates that you will work a single crochet in the back loop only. A box marked with the X indicates that you will work a drop down double crochet. So if we just look at this little part of the chart here, the first round that has the X's in it are the first time we'll do a drop down. So we would work this entire round in color B. Then when we get to this round, we're working in color A. So we would work single crochet in the back loop only in color A. Single crochet in the back loop only in color A. Then we would do a drop down and this is where we are covering up. When we drop down, we're working down over this round and we're covering up the color. So that's why we show it with the color being dropped down so you can see what the pattern creates when we're doing those drop down double crochets. Okay. So now when working mosaic crochet in the round, we don't cut the colors. You drop off the color at the end of each round and pick up a new color as you go. Color is changed at the slip stitch join in the back loop only and always tighten your, your yarn tails when joining at the end of each round. This will keep the join invisible. So this, just, this chart just shows a little bit more of how the pattern will look. The pattern is worked in a multiple of six. You will need to refer to the written pattern, but you will be able to follow on, along mostly with the chart. So the chart is worked in a multiple of six. So I have just shown you the smaller chart here, which is maybe the chart that you want to follow along with. And your repeat pattern will be from round three through round 14. So now because we're going to change colors on the slip stitch join, let's redo that. So we're finishing with a half double crochet. We're going to now change to the camel. So that final round, we're going to count that as round one of our chart that you see that's all in white. So I'm going to slip stitch. Whoops, and I'm doing it through the back loop only, which I read in the description. I'm gonna go through the back loop only. We're gonna pull through with our contrasting color, color B. We'll chain one and I like to just make sure everything is nice and tight. So just keep it all nice and tight. This round we are working single crochets in the back loop only. 
okay, for the entire round. So I'm just crocheting over that tail as I go, just to save a little weaving, but we've dropped off color A right at the join. So if we look at our chart here, I'm gonna expand it so that it's bigger. Blank boxes only, no X's. So we're single crocheting in the back loop all the way around. Now, as I worked around, I did double check my stitch count because we really need to make sure that we're working with the 48 stitches, the multiple of six so that our chart works out. We're gonna slip stitch in the back loop only. We're going to drop off now color B. We're gonna pick color A back up. Tighten up your tails and chain one. Our chain one isn't included as a stitch, but it helps us to get all of that nice and secure. We're gonna look at the chart again for our round three. So we're gonna start out with two single crochet in the back loop only we're going to drop down we're going to repeat that we're going to do single crochet in the next two in the back loop only and then we're going to do a drop down so single crochet in the back loop only of the first two okay and then the third stitch I like to look at my stitch, go directly underneath it to see that front loop. This is what we're working into when we do the drop down. So yarn over, we're going to go down, push your hook up under that loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two. Okay, and then we'll do a single crochet in the back loop only of the next two. I'm gonna count over one, two, and then in the third, which is right below that stitch, we're doing another drop down, double crochet. And we're repeating this all the way around. So one, two, and then a drop down, double crochet. One, two, Okay, so I'm gonna work that around off camera. Okay, so I've worked all the way around and we'll slip stitch in the back loop only. Chain one. Then we'll take a look at the chart. So this time we'll be dropping down, then we'll be doing three, a drop down, one, and then we come right back and repeat that. Okay, so we start out with that drop down I like to find those two loops right here. Drop down. Now here I also like to take a look at the chart. So I know we're doing three and the drop down will be in the center. So the second one should be that drop down stitch. You really have to make sure you're working this pattern in the right stitches because if you do one wrong stitch, you can throw the pattern right off and it end up not looking right. So one, two, three, we then have a drop down. And then one above that drop down. And then we're back to repeating the pattern. So drop down. One, two, three, 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 drop down.
drop down, single in the back loop, and a drop down. Okay, so see how these drop downs are going around this drop down, then we have three, and then we're going around that drop down. So repeat that all the way around. Okay, so I'm ending with a single crochet in the back loop only. I'm going to slip stitch in the back loop to join. And chain one. Okay, so now for round five, we're going to single crochet in the back loop only. We'll do a drop down, single crochet in the back loop only. Do a drop down and then two single crochet in the back loop only. Single crochet in the back loop. Then I'm coming to these three loops. So we'll look at those and I know I have to do a drop down, single drop down. The pattern should always work out or you've maybe made an error. Now I know I'm repeating it, so I have to do three before I do those again. So one, two, three, and then we should be coming to those three loops to do our drop down, single, and our drop down. Okay, so at this point you should be getting the hang of how this is working, how we're repeating it, and what we're going to do is we're going to keep working the mosaic pattern. So you'll want to go to the blog so that you can view the chart or you'll need to purchase the PDF and pull it up on your tablet or your device like this because it's really good to work from in this manner or you can print it out as well and have a hard copy. I know my daughter likes to print out the hard copy so she can mark off as she goes. So what you're going to do now is you're going to continue working all the way up to round 14. So you're going to work we're on round five, you're gonna go all the way, you're gonna to work to round 14, and then you're gonna come back and work round three and round four. At round five, we'll make our heel opening. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna work up the pattern, I'm gonna continue working it, and I'm gonna meet you back up for this round five where we do the heel opening, which would be the tricky part that I wanna work through with you. So I'm going to go ahead and now and work this part of the pattern. It will work up fairly quickly. It's not, it's not going to be too time consuming. And then we'll meet back up for that round five. Okay, so I've worked up to my repeat to round four. It's measuring about 5.75 inches at this point. And now what we're doing is working round five. Now we'll be working a total of 28 stitches of round five. So we'll begin with a single crochet in the back loop. We'll do a drop down, single crochet in the back loop, a drop down, one two and then we're back to three so i'm going to work that across now a total of 28 stitches and then i'll meet you back okay so i've worked across 28 this is where i'm ending with this drop down and now what we'll do is chain 20 to get us across the other 20 stitches Okay, so then we'll skip over 20 stitches and then we'll slip stitch, 
change over to color B, chain one. Okay, so now we'll be working round six. We'll be working round six, and when we get to the chain, we'll just be working single crochets across it. Okay, so we're gonna start out for round six with a single crochet in the back loop of the first two. Drop down. One, two, and drop down. One, two, and a drop down. And I'm just gonna keep working that around. Okay, so once you get to the chain, you're gonna work across, just make sure that you do have 20, that your stitch count is still on track. So in the back loop of the chain, we're just gonna work across. Okay, I've worked across 20. I'm gonna slip stitch in the back loop. Always make sure you're pulling these all nice and tight. Chain one. And now we're on to round seven of the pattern. Okay, round seven. And round seven, we're basically gonna go about it the same way. We're gonna work around until we get to the heel opening chain and we're gonna work through the back loops only across. So we can have the front loops again available for dropping down. So I'll work um, there's the first one. We're dropping down in the first stitch. One, two, three, and drop down. Okay, so I'm gonna work this all the way around and I'll meet you over for the chain. Okay, so once I get around, I'm just gonna keep working across in the back loop. You can always be counting just to make sure that you do stay on track with your stitch count. Okay, so it's just gonna look like that as we work around. Now the next round, we're just gonna be hopping right back into the regular pattern and working those drop downs because now we'll have this round here with those loops available. Okay, we'll slip stitch into the back loop only. And now we're on to round eight of the pattern. Chain one. So eight is a single in the back loop. Drop down, single, drop down, one, two, and three. And then we're just repeating this pattern. One, two, three, and then we'll start working those drop downs. Okay, so I'm just continuing with the pattern. One, 
two, three, drop down. Okay, so now what we're doing is we're just continuing with our pattern. We're working repeats of the pattern. So I will pop up the instructions on how many rounds that we're going to be working in total. So let's just grab the other stocking. So as you can see, we have a nice section of work we're going to do. Now we're gonna come back and finish this heel at the very end. Okay, so we're gonna come back to that at the end to work that heel in. So now we're to the leg portion of the stocking. We're gonna continue working our repeats and you're going to have, let's give it a measure just so you have an idea. Okay, it's about eight inches worth of length here. And then we'll be doing this ribbed cuffed band to go in the cream at the top of the stocking. So I'm going to now continue working the mosaic chart repeat around until I have the leg portion complete. Then I'm going to come back, show you how to do the ribbing, and then we'll finish off with the heel and then we'll add our embellishment. So we'll do the pom poms and add our nice beads to finish it off. I've then also just added a little chain for hanging. So I'm gonna continue now working that up and I'll meet you up for the next step. Okay, so I've been working away on the mosaic stocking and I've actually ended on round 10. So what I have done, if we go back to when we op did the heel opening at round five, I worked through to round 14 and then I repeated three through, through 14 two more times. And then three through to 10 is where I'm at now. So now what we're going to do, I switched over back to the white because we're gonna work just now a single crochet in the back loop only around. And this will set us up for our join as you go ribbing. So we won't do any drop downs. We're just going to work the single crochet in the back loop only. Okay, so once you've worked all the way around, again, you should have 48 stitches. I'm going to slip stitch and I'm just gonna go through both loops now. And then what we're going to do is chain out for the height of our ribbing. So I'm going to chain out 25. Okay, so it's going to be that long. Now you can adjust this if you want, but I find this is a nice fold over cuff length. I'm getting close to the end of this ball. It's getting a little snagged. Okay, then what we'll be doing is working a single crochet in the second chain from the hook. So one, two, we'll work single crochets down the chain. So you will have 24 single crochet stitches. Okay, so I've worked down my 24 stitches. I'm gonna skip over that first stitch that is attached to the chain right here and I'm going to slip stitch into the next two stitches and I'm gonna go right through the stitch. So this is how we're joining that ribbing to the stocking. So our first row um, is counted for that first slip stitch that we skipped. And now we're going to do two more rows and these slip stitches account for that. So we're turning our work. 
We're skipping over the two slip stitches that we just made and then we're going to work single crochets in the back loop only. Up the row for the band. Okay, and going up you should have 24. It is helpful to count this part because it is easy to lose a stitch. So once you reach the base, we're slip stitching in to the next two stitches. And make sure, so you can see where you've slip stitched the last time. So you're going into the next two. Slip stitch and slip stitch. Then you'll turn and work back up. And we're gonna continue doing this. Now, we will end with only one slip stitch as we work around because, because we skipped the first, we have an even number of stitches, so we'll end with only one. So at the end, you'll slip stitch into that final and then work back up. So you'll be actually ending at the top rather than at the bottom. So you skip over one, two slip stitches and then continue working in the back loop. So I'm gonna continue with this now. I'm gonna work the band around off camera and then we'll meet up to finish that off. Okay, so I finished working all the way around. I'm going to chain one. Now I'm just going to place the band together. We're gonna to slip stitch it together now. So I'm going to work through the back loop. I'm gonna go across to that starting chain and slip stitch it together. So you're just working through the back loop going across to that starting chain, working a slip stitch. So we're just gonna work that all the way down. Okay, once you get all the way down, we can just fasten the yarn off. And take your yarn needle. And we're just going to weave this tail. Get it right out of the way. Like to give it a nice stretch so it's not pulling in the top of your stocking too much. You're going to fold that over okay. So now what I like to do before I add on This one here, I've just added a little chain to the top. So you just wanna make sure you fold them both over the same if you're doing multiple stockings. Okay, and then what you can do, just go to your edge, you're just gonna put your hook through. And you can make a chain, another option. I have these tags. You could even use a tag as the, um, as the hanger. I have these long skinny ones that I got from Brick Bubble, so those are an option as well. 
or you could use twine, really whatever you want to hang the stocking. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then just come down and slip stitch. This is a really quick and easy way just to add a little hanger and then these tails you can just weave them in to get them out of the way okay so now let's work on the heel so you're going to put the stocking like this so we have the toe down the heel opening facing us and we skipped 20 stitches here if you remember that section of the pattern so i'm going to join into the 11th stitch so the halfway mark i'm going to grab my yarn and i am doing my heel in the white so i'm joining in with color a I'm going to chain one and I'm going to work. Let's actually join that in the back loop only. Chain one and single crochet. And we're going to work this around in the back loop. So we should have 10 stitches. Okay, then we're going to work a stitch in our corner. We're going to work across this chain 20 a stitch in the corner, and then we're going to work the final 10 across. Okay, so I'm coming up to my 10th stitch. I'm going to work a stitch into the corner. Then we're coming to the chain. And we had 20 chains, so we should be working across 20. Okay, so I've worked across that 20 stitches. We're going to have a stitch in the corner. And then we're working across, we should have 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I'm going to go through the back loops only of these stitches. Okay, and once we get back to the start, we're going to slip stitch to join and chain one. Okay, so now what we're going to do is work over seven and we can go through the full stitch now. So one, two, three. I've worked across seven. I'm going to do a single crochet two together so i'm going to go through the stitch pulling up a loop go through the next stitch pulling up a loop yarn over pulling through all three now i'm going to do a single crochet three together i'm going to go through pull up a loop 
go through the next stitch, pull up a loop, go through the third stitch, pull up a loop. I now have four on my hook, yarn over and pull through. And then a single crochet, two together. So go through, go through the next, three loops on the hook, and yarn over. Now I'll work across 14 single crochet stitches, and then I'll meet you for those decreases on the other side. And this will be the same decrease pattern, so we'll single crochet two together, pull through three, We'll single crochet three together, one, two, three, pull through four loops, and then we will do two together. You should be ending with seven stitches. And we will slip stitch to join. Chain one. Okay, so this time we'll work across five. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to do the same decrease pattern. So we'll single crochet two together. We'll do single crochet three together. And then we'll single crochet two together. Okay, and this time we should be working across 10 stitches. We'll work single crochet two together, single crochet three together, and then single crochet two together. And we're ending with five stitches. Then we'll slip stitch to join, chain one, and we'll work across three, We'll do two together. Then we'll do three together. Two together. And then we'll work across six. And then do the same decrease pattern, ending with three stitches. Okay, so I've slip stitched to join chain one. This time I'll work one, two, three, and then I'll do three together. and pull through four. Work across six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'll do three together, one, two, three, and you should be ending with three stitches. One, two, three. Slip stitch to join chain one. We'll work one, two, and then we'll do three together. One, two, 
one, two, three, four, We'll do three together. Ending with two stitches. Slip stitch to join. At this point, our hole is pretty small. And I think I'm liking the heel, so I'm gonna fasten off. Okay, so once you've fastened off, you're going to take your yarn needle. We're going to get this hole closed up. We're going to weave the yarn through every other stitch around. Okay, and then you'll just need to pull the hole closed. You can also weave through the front loops of every stitch around. Either way is fine. We just want to get this hole closed up. And then you're going to weave your yarn tail. We don't want to distort the heel. And then you can weave back in the opposite direction to secure your tail. Okay, so here is our heel. Okay, so next is adding some of these fun beaded pom-poms. So I am going to use a pom-pom maker to make them. And I'll have some linked, some pom-pom makers linked. This pom-pom maker that I have here is from a discontinued brand but there's lots available online. So I will link some of those for you. And depending on how much you wrap the yarn around the pom-pom, you can get slightly, as you can see, I wrapped more for my white than I did for the camel color. So this one's slightly bigger. It's approximately three inches, I would say. And this one's more about two and a half maybe 2.75. So just depending how much yarn you wrap will vary your size slightly. So I don't have quite as much of this color left, but I definitely have enough to make a pom-pom. So to make a pom-pom, it's really easy. Move this out of the way. You're gonna open up your pom-pom maker so it's like this. I'm going to take your yarn. You want your two arms together and we're just going to wrap. Wrap until you cover all of the arms and then you can keep wrapping to make the pom-pom as full. As full as you want. So you could keep wrapping this and even make a fuller pom-pom. I certainly don't want to run out to get my other arm filled up. So I'm going to stop. And the key is, is to make sure that the other two arms you wrap about the same as this arm. Okay, so once you have that, you can just snap that down. Then we'll take the other arms and we're gonna do the same thing. Now you could count how many wraps. I don't do that, I just go by, more by the visual in that they both sides look similar. The 
there's probably enough of the white left that you could even do two pom-poms from it. So you could get three in total. Okay, so I'm just looking at them both. They look similar. And I still have some yarn left over. Okay, so next you want to take some scissors that these ones aren't still aren't the best, but they work better than my other tiny ones. So you're gonna just snip all the yarn. Okay, so next what we're gonna do is take our yarn Put it through the grooves. You want it to be nice and long because we're gonna use it to also attach those beads. I like to go one through once and then through twice when making that knot and that will just help it secure. You just have to be careful, like you wanna pull, but this yarn will break if you pull too tight. Okay, and then we're just gonna go to the other side. I like to take my tails and then just give the pom-pom a good shake and there will be the odd little straggler you need to trim but for the most part you should get a perfect pom-pom shape okay and this one looks like a good size okay so next you can add your beads added five to one and I added three to the other pom-pom just so that they fall at different heights or lengths. You're just going to take your yarn needle and then attach the beads. So these are 20 mil millimeter size beads. I purchased them from Amazon and there will be a link in the description to my Amazon storefront with the links to the products that I use. Okay, and so what you can do then with this is you can take your string, your yarn, and you can attach it to the top. Okay, so we can just, you can weave one end and then we can knot this okay we can weave those tails to get rid of them and you could even make them longer by adding more beads really whatever you think. So I'm going to go ahead and make my other pom-pom and attach it as well. And then lastly, I got these little tags from Michaels, but you can find really little different tags everywhere, wooden tags, whatever you want to do. In the past, I found these little wooden plates for my stockings and I wrote my children's names on them. These are chalkboard style. So you can just take some chalk, you could get the chalk pen, which works well too, and just write your child's name, really whatever you would like. You could also just put their initial, you could do an initial on the nameplate, really whatever you want, just so that they know, everybody knows whose stocking is whose. 
Okay, so I've finished attaching my pom-poms. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and tap the bell to stay updated on all my new videos and tutorials. Thanks so much, guys. Have an awesome day.